some, as a result of something that came from the demand from the process that happened like so you want to say uh, that it was our it is our local system so it was not like adopted from the no 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 it's uh, 100% local foreign countries no no it wasn't adopted oh, from that's so point. the first sms <laughs> was created by our graduates our students yeah and they knew better than anyone else i think like what needs to be there and so when i go and then it works the same with students. When student logs in, it knows exactly uh, to which modules you have applied. And then the conference was adapted. So that's how we spent a whole year of studying by timetable, not by the professor asking students to join any time. So this, this gives us advantage during that time. It's, it's meant uh, to keep all the records unchanged services somebody has to maintain because this is not a like Microsoft office software that you can just uh, Give it to user and then people can just attack. Okay I was like as a student when I for the first time applied for the university and started my uh, education mm -hmm. I was really astonished by the system that you have uh, Implemented through the, our university and I would like to give some questions about this uh, system Would you like to answer to? some of them please sure of course uh when you just started it was what was it was it admission uh yeah you applied using using the admission system right yes yes and it was 2020 yeah 2020 before the covid ah before covid yes oh you also took that uh online test online test yeah from yeah. home yeah from home and you did not cheat right because we had cameras it was, everywhere. It was really difficult, actually. Was, I would like to get the scholarship, but it was really difficult. So okay. I didn't kind of Yeah, but, uh, back then it was COVID, yeah, of course. It was 100% uh, online. Like, even the examination, entrance exam and everything was online. Uh, of course, admission was always like it's an application system with some uh, back end behind with, uh, that, that's used by our admission office. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it's processed by them and it's it's... It's, it's also integrated with our uh, systems, with uh, everything that we have. And maybe if people are wondering what is this, this is intranet, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, our favorite intranet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, application, that, that's the first probably impression when, when applicants see is like, wow, they have application that goes step by step and they have examinations that I can set, I can even pay for my uh, examination from there. Uh, and then uh, once you're get uh, unconditional offer, you automatically transfer it into our student record system, mm -hmm. right? So, and then student record system uh, holds all those, all that information throughout your uh, studies. Uh, once you graduate, it generates your award and everything. So things are automatic, like uh, while you're studying, we have intranet. So, yeah, usually the students do have, when, when they first see it, there is a big impression, so. Yeah, <laughs> it was my yeah. impression, yeah. yeah. Anything else you want to? So, as a student, uh -huh. uh, as a person who always prefer doing something, visualize how it will kind of happen, mm -hmm. what I will do, the steps, I would like mm -hmm. to answer, uh, ask, how did you visualize, like, what was the idea? How did you see the uh, this wide internet and who was the initiator of the idea itself? Uh, yeah, it's a very interesting question. Uh, there wasn't something that you know some idea came to me or uh, or something that someone told us what to do I think we can see it as a as a uh, as some as a result of something that came from the demand from mm. the process that happened like uh, uh, let's say obviously when when students applied like when when I just got here my uh, uh, a long time ago there was no such a system as admission system. So you want to say so that it was our, it is our local system. So it was not like adopted from the- No, 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 it's 100% uh, local. Foreign countries. No, no, it wasn't adopted from anywhere because okay. if you look at the application, it's- Wow, it's great. It's unique, it's, uh, it's, uh, it is customized for our uh, system. But of course it could be, it can be customized to any other applications. It's flexible, it could be changed to customize. Uh, but it was developed locally uh, in Uzbekistan. Yeah. 
So probably this is the first admission system, I guess, uh, throughout uh, in Uzbekistan, throughout university that was mm -hmm. made. Uh, and then, um, well, uh, like a long time ago when I just started, it was uh, mostly it was all Excel based. It was Excel everywhere, like even your uh, your marks, they used to print it and then um, publish it on the wall, like just like, mm, like uh, yeah, like uh, it used to be. <laughs> uh, and the student records, everything was kept in Excel sheets in different folders by years, by months. And then it, uh, back then we had only like, I think 800 students. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of manageable by registrar. And then we saw that the number of registrar staff is getting more and more. I mean, they need more employees to manage this. And then, uh, uh, yeah, one day I said, well, why don't we just create some uh, centralized database that all these records will be kept. And then we created uh, our first application, uh, student record system. So actually student record system was created even before the admission system. And everything was, uh, so we started like uh, keeping all the marks, all the, all these uh, modules, courses, we split them. So we created some database with application and by the way when we started doing it uh, we did not even have uh, in our department and uh, uh, developers mm -hmm. it was just help desk and so then how did you manage them? so we opened up a position two positions developer positions and we could not find developers back then and then what we did is like okay we have the is department uh, we're teaching students how to program how to engineer so let's get uh, let's have some bright minds from our students. Oh, that's interesting. So, the point. first SMS yeah. was created by our graduates, our students. Yeah. And they knew better than anyone else, I think, like what needs to be there. So, when, I did, when, when we did analytics part together, it was just straightforward. We had a, a handbook that came from UK, and then we have students, and then I, here I was as a technical uh, guide for them. And then uh, we started creating it together with students. Brilliant job. So that was the initial step. Okay. Uh, of course, there was like some. Um, uh, it it uh, well registrar office. Of course, they needed like a learning curve because they got used to Excel sheet and then doing things differently. So when they first saw it, there, of course there was there wasn't a trust that much of trust. They said, well. What if this database gets corrupted or something? Uh, what happens? We have our files, but your database once in one wonderful day, it just, it's gone. What are we going to do? Can it's we trust unusual. it? Yeah. And they were like, yes, it's a database. We'll take backup, uh, backups and then it's in centralized uh, and it is a robust hardware, everything behind this. So don't worry about this. So ever since, uh, yeah, this SRS was used, and on top of this SRS, and then we, and the next step was, uh, let's now, uh, oh, we have all the records, all, uh, all the progress, now probably we need some, something like LMS, learning management system, right, and then we search for, for the market, and then we could not find something that we could integrate together with our SRS, mm -hmm. and then we said, uh, okay, so uh, we don't want a system uh, that lives in its own life separately. Uh, probably it's, it would be better since we're doing custom job, uh, probably we should be creating some integrated system around this course. So the LMS was also created by us. So the next brilliant idea. That was the next idea. And then mm -hmm. we created the, the LMS. The first version was very primitive. Uh, now it, it got like, it, it, we integrated this with uh, uh, SCORM, it supports video conferencing. It supports almost any type of content. It holds like a more than terabyte of data of students. Uh, all the courseworks, Tony team, all these things got integrated throughout years. Mm -hmm. Okay, we did not build it in three months or six months. It took us uh, quite a bit of time. And then every single step, every single feature we uh, added, it was Hint, it was suggested by students, by academics. Uh, so it came by demand. Yeah. Okay. It, there wasn't someone like, it was like, it should be like this or like that. We, the only thing probably what, what we did is we filtered out those and they put priorities. We did some math, what's demanded, what's not. 
and then based on that we made decisions and then implemented it and now our IT is like it got bigger we don't have just two programmers we have uh, over 10 people are working as a team and then uh, we're building mobile applications uh, not just LMS uh, we have student services over 60 student services that exists in our intranet system so as you can see every single uh, uh, this uh, uh, tile we have like uh, they're all like could be like separate uh, applications considered as a separate application and then it's just all you have to do is just select click and then it opens up mm -hmm. now for instance I also do teaching which was a good advantage wow. for me I didn't know about that. Yeah, I, I teach object-oriented programming and then software quality, quality assurance. So uh, it's, it's a good experience because I'm not just developing it with my team. I can also see our, uh, what, what, we, what needs to be further done and do we have any problems here? How can we make it more user-friendly, right? This kind of stuff. I see it from the side of academics also, not just from the side of IT. So that also helps us. Good strategy to improve the system. Yeah. yeah. I ask you something as well. Of Are course. you collaborating with other universities too? Are you asking them to what to what extent they are developing? Do they have the same uh, software? So w w what is the dynamics now? Was you mean with other universities? Yes, with other international. With international, of course. Yeah, we uh, we learn from uh, them. For instance, uh, this view right now, which which I have opened, uh, I, I, this was inspired by uh, the leading. Uh, LMS uh, interface uh, it was it's called canvas and uh, when I looked at them I said well this is a pretty nice interface and it's very convenient we could adapt it uh, the initial LMS didn't look like this it was slightly different it didn't have that much of dynamic content and I said well maybe we should take a bit of this uh, or organizer part of it like lessons part and so, and then when you look at uh, when you go to their website I mean, the canvas you can see that already like thousands of universities are using it and it's it's one of the uh, leading uh, LMS system but we could have also adopted but the, the integration part again that would be a problem because it's not just the university does not consist of just an LMS or SRS and there are other services also that needs to be uh, that needs to work together because if we had uh, different systems from different vendors uh, would have something like the like in a zoo right like there's a monkey there's an elephant there's another animal and they don't know how to talk to each other and then we need we, we should have like the translators in between to translate so they can communicate but now since our system is integrated we don't have to do this kind of uh, translations and our systems they work together as an integrated one uh, the user security comes from the active directory so which is a standard Microsoft uh, uh, system and uh, the everything else for, for instance right here when I just clicked and I saw that I have uh, let's say object-oriented programming and quality assurance right mm -hmm. so intranet how does how does intranet know about this for instance of course it, it's integrated with SRS and it knows that I, I, I also, I'm a module leader uh, it knows that I teach these two uh, modules uh, and then it, it works the same with students when student logs in it knows exactly uh, to which modules you have applied and then register it right or enrolled and then based on that it shows the list for instance and the same thing with assessments like when you go to assessments again there's a list of uh, modules there is a list of what I have taught what I have marked what I have assessed that's also a part of this right uh, and the same thing is uh, with our assessment system like online assessment systems that that's uh, from time to time it's used even though it's an offline teaching now but we still have from English department sometimes like uh, requests that uh, they want to do uh, online assessment uh, and then plus uh, what else like uh, and also we have uh, video conferencing for instance right the integration with let's say uh, uh, big blue button for instance yeah we integrated this with blue, big blue button 
which does video conferencing and gets uh, archived. And by the way, when we did teaching during the COVID, it was, it's also integrated with our timetable. Okay, it wasn't something like you would invite students uh, to teach something. No, it was just a timetable. By the way, I have a timetable here. Yeah, if we go here, and then click on timetable. The, the, the teaching was like this. Like as a student, you would go and you would say, well, on Monday at three o'clock, for instance, I have CONFIP methods, right? Mm -hmm. And exactly at that time, uh, the conference would start. Okay, the, the, the teacher would join and students would join by timetable. So timetable was integrated with intranet, with our SRS system, and plus video conferencing was adapted to it. So, you so that's how we spent a whole year of studying by timetable, not by, by a professor asking students to join any time. So this, this gave us advantage during that time also. So okay. details matter. Yeah. Could you give some feedback from students? <clears throat> no, was it quite suitable and comfortable for them to use? Uh, from students, we always get a feedback, like from CCMs, like uh, we have CCMs, right? Co course committee meetings. And then uh, one of the interesting feedbacks uh, lately was uh, this new design. It was, the design was, this is a new design because we have new icons and we have new brand, uh, our colors, right? And uh, one of the feedbacks that was interesting is uh, I saw uh, some students saying like the old w design of these tiles were used to be better than now. Even though this was done by a professional <laughs> designer now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they said uh, the old one was better. And I'm like, uh, okay, <laughs> what should we do now? Like, should we go back or this probably this looks better? But But somehow, there's such a feedbacks also that students probably, uh, when they look at something, they, uh, they see that every single tile before it was handpicked, not designed. It was like added one by one. Every time when we try to add something, we, we for instance, like learning board management system, it used to have uh, some hand draw, draw like tile by, uh, uh, by one of the, our staff members who used to, to draw something. And he specifically, he draw that, that tile, and then we used it as a tile. And maybe students, uh, they saw that uniqueness of it, and they liked it, and, but now it looks more general. So maybe that was the feedback. And, and then now we're thinking about that also, maybe uh, we should uh, focus on making every single tile, every single part of the intranet, uh, more unique. So when you go inside, you will intuitively, you will see, oh, this is unique. This is the only place where I see this kind of uh, uh, icons, this kind of style. So probably we should work on that. So that, that's one of the feedback. So yeah, we constantly get feedbacks from students, uh, of course. And then based on that, we gradually upgrade our system. That's how we've done like for throughout all these years. Yeah. I guess now. I have a question about the SRS yeah. system uh -huh. because it's dramatically sharply changed recently. Yeah, yeah. We, we, are, we launched a new one. Yeah. yeah, I'm just curious about how long did it take for you to change it and do you have some more plans to even more develop it further? Yeah, of course. Uh, since this was a core system, uh, it wasn't that easy to change. Uh, because uh, our goal was <clears throat> we, we have like uh, 10 years or even more years of worth of data sitting there and then we had to keep all that data and then we had to move uh, transfer everything into a, a new interface with a new code with new source code and by keeping a database uh, that was a bit challenge uh, it, but it, it we started this a, uh, about a year ago and then since we're busy with some other like mobile DMAs, mobile uh, LMS part, uh, and, and, and then this summer, like in 2023, we said like, oh yeah, let's get together. Let's focus on uh, SRS now. We want to launch a new one. And then we spent uh, four months, uh, which we, we focused only on SRS. And then on September, we launched it. So it was a bit challenge but it was a good challenge. And 
uh, I think that, that was a good uh, launch because uh, the, the system <coughs> that was developed like long, long time ago, the, the architecture, uh, the, the technology that was used back then, it got a bit old. It wasn't uh, uh, fast enough. It wasn't uh, adaptable to the, or, or, or uh, to these mobile uh, versions of these new technologies, right? So uh, that's why we needed like a, a new SRS. And then I'm happy that we did it. And then we're still doing some uh, reports, part of it, report sections. And then I think very soon we'll finish that. Yeah. I would like to ask about the security. I know that every student has its own ID. Mm -hmm. And uh, how important uh, was for you to secure all the part of the system? Like we need to log in by, use our, by using our ID. Without mm -hmm. that, we cannot even enter. Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea was that to secure uh, even the students part, even so uh, nothing important there except marks. So the idea, what was the behind the idea of securing everything? Well, uh, yes, yeah, security is is one of the biggest priorities because if, if the system is not secure, then there's no uh, there's no way we can even use it. We can't even consider of using it. It needs mm -hmm. to be very secure, and that security comes also uh, as a part of a, a development process. Also, so we use the standard technology like all these. Uh, uh, services that we supply they go, uh, uh, the user uh, maintenance or user uh, management that goes to the active directory uh, and it's also now it's cloud-based so we have a hybrid system uh, our email as you guys know it's in outlook.com mm -hmm. and our user active directory is it's integrated as that and then you guys seen that there's a uh, multi-factor authentication that's a part of our uh, security. And then uh, automatic robots cannot go just to this uh, or pick up those passwords and then log in because we have uh, this uh, state of the art technology of Google that protects our login page. Mm. Uh, and the passwords are always like, uh, since it's managed by uh, our systems administrator, it's, it's always we uh, follow the complexity of passwords, how it needs to be how complex it needs to be done and the lengths and everything so those standards are followed uh, to keep the system uh, secure plus we have partners uh, in the uk we, we work together uh, to secure our service and our services like uh, they're located within the university so we have a server rooms multiple server rooms and all our services uh, uh, all these ports, all this infrastructure and everything, uh, it's reviewed, it has been uh, uh, analyzed together with our partners in the UK. Uh, uh, University of uh, Westminster partners are also our partners. So we, we do conduct like uh, security testing, vulnerability tests, all these processes, it happens uh, within our university also probably. I think this this makes uh, our system secure because those are professionals. They they don't work only with universities, but with uh, large organizations, companies, and uh, we've been through those audit system to check for our vulnerability to that. And then of course, that was a uh, it, it was a commercial partnership. And uh, so uh, of course, in the beginning, uh, they did find some uh, loopholes. And they said, we need to close here, there, we need to secure that here. And then we just fine tune those. And yeah, and then we achieved a secure system. Yeah. So it, it was very important. It was very crucial. Uh, and then we're still working on it. Uh, I think it's a nonstop process. Yeah. Have you ever been hacked? Uh, multiple times we've been, uh, we've, uh, people have tried to hack us, of course, it happens. Students sometimes they wander around and they say, what can I hack in the system? Because they used every day and then they become probably user friendly. And then of course they have an account. They're already in, in, in the system and then uh, it's easier. It's easier. Yeah. Uh, so one level in <laughs> yeah. and, and then uh, they try. And, and then there were uh, probably, I think if I'm not mistaken, there were some uh, cases someone even hired professional 
uh, hacker team from US and they try to hack in also. Uh, and specifically, I think that was the aim to SRS, but uh, if you compare the intranet system and SRS, SRS is a lot secure because um, and it's, it's filtered heavily. And, and so there were attempts, we saw it in our logs and everything, but, but I don't, it wasn't hacked. SRS was never was hacked, and <laughs> I'm glad to say that. Hopefully, it will not be hacked. Uh, hopefully, yeah. Well, there's always a risk by any system, uh, uh, any system that has there's a potential that it can be hacked. It can, uh, somebody could try uh, because it's open, it's public, right? Uh, well, that's why we're here. The department is here, and we we working on uh, making it more secure every day. So, I was like, yeah, I'm an economics with finance student. Uh -huh. We talked about the idea as a business idea, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting part is finance. How much did you spend for implementing this system? Your budget ranges? Uh, well, um, well, since, uh, yeah, also one of the strategies of why we need to develop our custom based uh, system mm -hmm. was uh, compared to other countries, our local programmers, the, we can pay them less money, <laughs> oh. <laughs> right? Because they don't require too much of a you know, high salary uh, yet. But now, yeah, it's 2023, it's, uh, it got very expensive. But uh, five years ago, for instance, yeah, uh, especially if you hire uh, uh, to start with uh, just the graduates of our own, uh, so it wasn't like something that we, our mission wasn't something we have to spend a lot of money and then create something based on that. It was something that we want to create so people can use, That's so awesome. people are happy. Mm. Yeah, it was kind of our mission uh, that uh, we want to create some system that our university uses. it. Since our university, uh, as our VP directors there, when they announced, they said uh, this is a, the first experimental university that was opened by the order of our first president. Uh, and ever since, like many things that we do, it's, it's kind of experimental also. And then our mission is we want to create something that, that uh, everyone can use it. Like now, since we already got mature, we have so many systems, so many services running. Uh, and then now we're thinking about like, maybe we can share all this knowledge, all these systems with other universities also. So, uh, and then we thought like, should we maybe just give up these systems to them so they can use it for free. And then uh, we thought maybe if we do that, who's going to maintain this, this, this user? This requires a bit of training, uh, the installation and some maintenance also. Uh, that also requires some resources for that. So, and then we thought maybe um, if, uh, if uh, other universities want to use it, yeah, we can install it for free. Uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can set up a, maybe even the cloud-based uh, subscription for this or we can install on their local service but uh, we, we must train them so they can use it they know how to use it and then we must uh, maintain the system at least for the three months for, for the first three months or six months so be, uh, before they get used to it right and that costs money so and then we thought well since we it does require money to to support the system further uh, probably it needs to be, you know, partially at least commercialized. Mm -hmm. So now we're working on the commercializing it. Uh, and then, uh, so yeah, if, if other universities like international universities or our national universities, if they're interested, of course they can, uh, they can purchase it. The purchase goes like not just buying it, the, the, the technology, this applications, it's mostly maintenance costs. It's mostly support, which we probably ask money for. So you're kind of yeah. asking money not for the whole hard job, hard work, no, but no, no. for the maintenance. Yeah, this is our national, national system. We, we created this here in Uzbekistan with our own uh, uh, students and then our local programmers. Uh, so people can use it. So people can get some benefit from it. Not something uh, that you can sell and get rich or something. No. So that's why it's it's uh 
it's mostly yeah for the support yeah, support of course to support it we will need just not, not just like three people or five people maybe for each university there, there must be at least a couple of maintainers so think about this like if 10 universities buy it then that means there are 20 people would be supporting it and then somebody has to pay salary for that right so that part probably uh, needs to be commercialized as well yeah thanks for the answer <laughs> no, thanks. i have last question uh, about your future goals because uh -huh. now you have very beautiful internet yeah. very strong srs uh -huh. uh, the mail and all this stuff is working and integrating as you said uh -huh. what are your future plans what are you what are you planning to do in the next five years kind well, of solution you want to give to yeah we, we're stuff. looking at the trend now right now we're watching how this uh, ai thing is happening throughout the world we, mm. we know that students are already using it and i know our staff members are even academics are they using it in learning purposes of course and our students are also using it for learning purposes and uh, so maybe uh, in the future uh, we're thinking about uh, the AI integration, but not sure yet. We're still watching, like, how, how is it going to develop? Recently, you guys have seen it, like, uh, today is December uh, what is it, 19th, 19th, right? Mm -hmm. A few days ago, uh, like, uh, Elon Musk, he, or I don't know who, somebody fired this uh, Altman, yeah, because the AI not just answers the questions, it started creating some tasks and questions itself generating probably that was the reason but i'm not sure what happened so there's some discussions some disputes happening some changes dynamically so for now we're watching it but of course maybe in the future there will be some integration with ai uh, uh, and then um, of course it will be for learning purposes uh, for academic part of it of the benefit can be probably in the future can be uh, integrated and then we're, uh, we're also working on making our system uh, mobile friendly. Uh, as you guys can see, like this document management system we have right there. And then right, right there down there, we have another one called mobile DMS, which is meant for mobile uh, uh, use. And the same thing with uh, LMS. We have, we're creating uh, right here, there's a desktop version, but there's also mobile version of LMS. And for the SRS also, the new one is uh, already mobile friendly. So we're making everything mobile friendly because I know that uh, from our statistics, we have uh, laptops, we have desktops, uh, you know, academics, we use it. But uh, by statistics, if you look, uh, everyone is now is just holding the devices. They're using it. You know, this is heavily used, so we must adapt. And that's what we've been doing. Like we're adapting all the applications into mobile friendly. No, that's it. That's that's not future. That's what we're doing now. But future would be probably, uh, you know, I think the future will be also it also will uh, the, depend on the demand of requests of students. Just like we've done uh, for the last five years, uh, it will be the same. Like we will collect all the requests, all the demands from you guys, mm -hmm. uh, and then based on that, we will just change it. Uh, change it and adapt it based on your request i yeah. know as a student for me during the uh, student period uh, mm -hmm. it's important to be supported to be motivated by someone yeah. and as you know many programs many um, systems ai especially uh, kind of implemented motivational kind of texts mm -hmm. or something else can we make uh, our internet or srs not something like recording system or strict system mm -hmm. as uh, everyone like used mm -hmm. to see but something like motivate students makes them feel uh makes them like feel how i can say a human uh, yeah 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 <laughs> if you enter the srs it's a little bit uh, frightening because there, there are marks and not, uh -huh. and not all the time they are good maybe we uh -huh. can use something that says it's okay yeah you uh -huh. got some low marks but the next time you will do better can yeah, I think the, in the future, the integration with AI, we could come up with something like that. Yeah. Because uh, if you integrate it, it will know what mark you already got. When you, yeah. when you log in, it would be like, don't worry, you did fine. You're good. You can take a look at your marks. I, I'm sure you can do a lot better next time. Uh, this time it's, it's this. And then, uh, and then it probably it will give you also advice saying like, uh, 
to your uh, next modules we recommend you to read this and that and look at these sources and uh, that would be very useful for you so it would watch for your progress for yeah, instance this would right? be great. and then it would give you some hints on what needs to be done to further improve your education those those things those thoughts are you know, also spinning around <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully they will come to yeah, I would say thank you beforehand. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I would never s thought that uh, IT department uh, includes so many uh, different sectors like mm -hmm. business, marketing, let's say economics and finance. Mm -hmm. I was like shocked that as a one person, you included many, um, how I can say, points of view in order to improve, in order mm -hmm. to create this kind of system. That was an honor for me to get uh, find out about that. Thanks a lot for this interview. Oh, well, thank had you. Really it's, great it's, uh, let me mention this is a teamwork, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just one person cannot do this much in this scale. So thank, I just want to say thank you for my team, for for the administration, for allowing us to do this kind of change, this uh, adaptive work, which it's, it's all uh, possible because uh, the culture of this university, right, mm -hmm. of Westminster University, and I just want to say our faculty and everyone. So, yeah, without them, this wouldn't be possible, of course. I would express my gratitude and, uh, from all of our students of the Westminster, Thank too. You. Thank you. Thank you for your, Thank you, yeah. thank you for your team, too. Thank you, Mohamed.